Hey everybody! Welcome to Let's Look at Teleglitch, the Die More edition uh, that is now coming out on Steam. So let's talk a little bit about Teleglitch. I apologize for kind of the uninteresting sort of title screen that we have here, but this is Teleglitch in a nutshell. You know, on a visual level, especially from a UI standpoint, it's very simplistic. It doesn't necessarily provide the best backdrop for us to talk about this. So you know what? Why don't we actually start a new game on level one instead? And I'm going to skip over the dialogue because I'm going to introduce it myself. So many of you are probably familiar with Teleglitch because I did actually uh, cover it when it came out on Desura. What this is is essentially a top-down twin-stick shooter with survival horror elements and also some roguelike elements as well. You are basically playing as a, a scientist or a, a captive person, I guess you could say, in some kind of military base. Uh, and they're experimenting with portals and, you know, interdimensional rifts and something has gone terribly wrong and now the facility has been overrun by aliens or mutants and you are uh, the only survivor that you know of. So basically, if you want to describe it in a kind of Isaac-like fashion, you know, you're walking around here uh, trying to find new items essentially to upgrade your character with, and then you're also trying to find a uh, teleporter which will take you down to the next level. Now, there's numerous kind of elements to the gameplay, uh, but this is a, the basic way to describe it. Now, there is also combat. You can see I have ammo. I can aim my pistol like so, uh, but I can also just use my knife just by using the lead left mouse button, and the game is brutal. It encourages you... Oh, I didn't mean to shoot a bullet there. That was a total waste. Encourages you to knife as frequently as possible, and in the most visceral way possible to kill these uh, aliens or mutants. Now, Teleglitch is already out, Northern Lion. Why are you covering it again? This is actually a brand new expanded version of the game. My guess is that there are probably going to be mutants uh, close by. Uh, but this is a brand new expanded version of the game that is coming out on Steam as well as Desura for the same price. Uh, and it's being published by Paradox Interactive, actually, having picked it up, I guess, from the original developer, picking up the uh, distribution rights. So what does the Die More Edition include for those of you who did pick up? Uh, Teleglitch in its initial Desura release. Basically, there's five new levels and they kind of function in a similar way to Wrath of the Lamb, where they don't actually happen at the end of the game. They're basically, oh shit, okay, let's engage in some combat here while I talk. Uh, they're basically like alternate floors uh, that you have the option to go to. So at the end of like level one, for example, instead of there just being one teleporter that takes you down to level two, uh, there's actually a multitude uh, or a, a choice you have, I should say, between two teleporters. Apologies for the disjointed commentary here, but I am uh, in the middle of uh, being swarmed by a thousand enemies simultaneously. This is going to be uh, a major test. Luckily, I do have a decent amount of health to start with here. Not a decent amount of ammo, though. At least it, it, it's going to erode pretty quickly, so I should be, uh, if possible, using my knife to kill people. But yeah, so you, at the end of every level, or at least a few of the levels, you will have the opportunity... Uh, to either choose to go to like a military complex or like a biological area, each one containing its own uh, strengths and weaknesses. So I lost like 36 health there, which is not very good. In addition to that, there's new items and uh, there's new kind of crafting as well. Now crafting is a big element in uh, Teleglitch here, so let me just uh, demonstrate that as I reload here. So that was a difficult room, but we managed to make it out. Um, by hitting the C button, you can see my inventory here. I can actually, right now there's not really much I can craft because I don't have any items except for my pistol, some ammo, uh, and an empty can. But I do have these explosives, which are like 250 grams explosives. If I want to combine them, I just hit C and I can make a 500 gram explosive, which will do more damage and have a wider explosive radius. Uh, but we will get, um, oh, we will get into more uh, complex crafting in the future. Now I really don't want to use ammo if possible. Even if it's going to cost me a little bit of health, uh, ammo is going to be our lifeblood here. There's a lot of canned food stores that we can use to replenish our health. But in a weird way, it's kind of like a horror type version of Isaac. And I really like this game. Um, there's a tube that we got there. Can we create anything with that? No. Excuse me, I was just about to open this cache of items here. Um, but yeah, I really liked this game when it initially came out, but I, I think because it only released on Desura, it didn't really uh, generate that much attention. So I'm glad that it's getting kind of a, a wider release here, and in a more definitive kind of like Criterion Collection style uh, edition, which is totally awesome. So I hope this is going to garner some more attention now that it is on Steam. And I believe it is indeed uh, 13 bucks when it's going to come out on Steam, so kind of an unusual price. But anyway, uh, we picked up some more items. I picked up uh, another 250 gram explosive and uh, an uh, adhesive grenade launcher, which I can actually use to well let's wait until I find a swarm of enemies which oh we did now get out of there now, now let's use our adhesive grenade launcher we'll attach a grenade to these dudes and uh, yeah they'll, they'll stick together and then explode but we only have 10 ammo for this so we should be a little cautious so I guess it causes yeah the aliens to stick together all right I, I previously thought it just stuck to the aliens uh, but that makes sense as well. So we're just going to knife these dudes. And again, in terms of structure, it kind of has like a Binding of Isaac style. So we're going to try to, you know, gain some items that will actually uh, improve our chances of success. Craft better items. Like, for example, you know, I, I haven't played a ton of Teleglitch, but I've crafted things like um, like an auto pistol. Like if you get, oh, don't walk into that. If you walk into that, you will die. Really horrifying sound effects in this game, by the way. That is like a dimensional tear there. 
Um, but yeah, in my limited time with uh, both versions of Teleglitch, I've created things like an auto pistol, where basically you find two 9mm pistols, and you can combine them uh, to create a, a pistol that fires two shots at once, so it, it does uh, make your ammo, unfortunately, uh, go down faster, but on the... Br oh, no! On the bright side, it also, um, you know, kills enemies faster. So let's try another uh, AGL here. That was a weird kind of camera swivel there. There, we got them all combined. They've exploded, and almost all of them died. Now let's try to take this dude out. There we go. That worked fantastically. Now we really need to find some food. Oh, actually, we have a med kit. Let's use that right now. Really, the thing I like about, uh, or one big thing I like about Teleglish that might not be immediately apparent is that I think it has a, a totally awesome interface. Like our inventory on the left side, there's going to be more enemies here. I can hear them kind of chittering. Um, there's uh, the, the interface on the left side is like persistent and always open, uh, which makes it very easy to kind of switch between weapons on the fly just by using your mouse wheel. And also, you know, the ability to combine weapons just by using the C key uh, very easily is good. Uh, and, and it makes it, you know, you don't have to fiddle around with like an obtuse crafting menu. It's basically like, here's the ingredients for this, uh, here's what it does, would you like to make it? Now there is also a substantial amount of lore in the story, and this is kind of told in a swapper type style, where you find these kind of primary sources just out in the wild. So, Teleglitch Spacetime Anomaly, these blobs of black and colorful anomaly seem to be the result of today's experiment with unlimited range teleportation. We have been investigating this phenomenon for the past two hours and think it might have profound implications for theoretical physics. The blackness seems to be literally an inside-out spacetime curvature and opens a range of possibilities for research. My colleague has already suggested we could weaponize it by capturing the field into super intense wave and pressure containers to be used for planetary bombardment. Oh, and if you touch it, your brain explodes. So it's a combination of, like, setting the atmosphere and also conveying useful information a lot of times. What is this? Canned meat? Alright, we can eat that canned meat to get some extra health back. Beautiful. Now, um, what was I going to say? Oh, the another thing is that, um, oh, is this a secret area? I don't think so. Um, the, uh, lore has also been expanded in this version of Teleglitch, or so I've been told, at least. Uh, I never really made it far enough in the game to, uh, get a substantial picture of the story. There are nine or ten levels in Teleglitch, uh, and I think the furthest I've ever- Oh, it's not a good place to be! The furthest I've gotten is, like, level three. So, uh, definitely, let's just say there are, um... There's more gold for me to mine in this game. It's, it's like Isaac, you know, it gets substantially more difficult as time goes on. Uh, we have enough ammo that I can feel okay about using my gun on these guys. Now, I should point out, Teleglitch is not a game for everybody. It, as as Isaac-y as it is, you know, it lacks a certain part of uh, Isaac's charm on a graphical level, but I don't mean that necessarily in a 100% negative way. Let's just look at our map here to see where we might want to go. Red doors are doors that we haven't been through. Um, yeah, it, you know, it lacks Isaac's uh, graphical charm. I think it's got very simplistic visuals, uh, but nonetheless, probably took a, a substantial amount of effort to make, I'm sure. Uh, but from my perspective, ooh, a shotgun. Very effective here uh, against swarms of enemies, of course. This might be a secret. I don't think it is, though. Um, but yeah, you know, when I posted my earlier Teleglitch video when the game was first out on Desura, a lot of people uh, were under the... In, oh, there's another door back here we should go through. Were um, arguing to a certain extent. They're like, oh, you know... Uh, I don't really like the visuals in the game. I wish indie developers would just hire, like, you know, $250,000 uh, contracts for artists to do all the art in their game. And, you know, there, I guess there is a, some gold to mine in that argument. That Teleglitch is visually simplistic. That being said, I think in a way it adds to the uh, atmosphere of the game. Because everything looks kind of vague and, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say amorphous, but mysterious. And, uh, you know, the fear of the unknown means that which I don't understand scares the shit out of me, at the very least. Uh, this should be another... Uh, fight that we have. Oh, okay, let's take out our shotgun, because I did just get one of these, and I should be able to combine um, more uh, items together very soon. So you're not just making, like, auto pistols. That was, like, the one example of how to craft new weapons. But also, you make a lot of, kind of, like, guerrilla warfare style, like, makeshift explosives. Like, if you have a nail box, which is just a box full of nails, I'm assuming, and you uh, combine it with explosives, then you do create, um... How many more shells do I have? Just ten. Okay, we should use our knife for this then. Um, then you do create a, um, like a nail bomb. You should be able to create that right here. Yeah, a nail bomb. And by doing that, and creating some more valuable explosives here, uh, we will have a nail bomb that we can throw that will do a ton of damage to enemies around us. We also have a Panzerfaust, which is a disposable rocket launcher with one shot only, which scares the shit out of me. Now, we do have a lot of canned meat here, which is fantastic. By picking up this canned meat, we will be able to heal ourselves a little bit. And uh, what do we have here? This is some more lore, so I'm going to skip over that for now. Let's take a look at our map. One complaint I do have about Teleglitch uh, is that sometimes it can be difficult... Uh, I guess we want to go back up this way. Sometimes it can be a little bit, even laborious, to find out where to go. The floors are substantially larger uh, than in a game like, for example, The Binding of Isaac or, or Spelunky or something along those lines. 
this is not the right way to go. Um, so yeah, a game of Teleglitch is definitely something that you're probably going to want to save like halfway through. Uh, and then, you know, revisit later or maybe even save, you know, a, a multitude of times over the course of your playthrough and then revisit later uh, time and time again if you want to succeed. And then, to a certain extent, this is kind of just a, a personal difference in uh, like gameplay styles that I prefer, but I prefer the kind of roguelike -y games that I can play. Uh, all in one sitting because oftentimes I kind of lose my my lust for the game if I end up having to come back to it later uh, But I know there's a lot of people that uh, would definitely prefer you know something like Isaac, but with a more uh, Long or a, a focus more towards length. I guess would be one way to put it There's another door down here that I haven't gone through so yeah, I've never defeated Teleglish I probably sunk about four or five hours into the game uh, across all versions uh, and I, I have a feeling that maybe if you're gonna have a successful run of the game a successful run would probably take you somewhere on the order of five or six hours uh, But maybe that's just cuz I'm bad. I don't know. Let's take a look at our map again This is what I mean where sometimes it's hard to tell where the heck I'm supposed to go um, It looks like there is I'm just taking a look there might be an area down there But I think there's definitely an area over here that I missed and maybe an area up here as well, like there's a door that I didn't go through all the way. We're essentially just looking for a teleporter to take us down to the next floor, so I I'm hoping that we can find that. I just want to consult my map again. Did we go through here? We did not go through here, and this is another kind of cache of items. Also, sound design in this game, worth noting, uh, very horrifying, very industrial, very kind of like, I don't know, chittering like the aliens in, you know, the movie Aliens or Alien. Uh, I think there's a door on our right side down here that we can take. The problem is, you know, the doors only show up on your map uh, once you've uh, actually seen them. So if you just run straight past one, then you uh, suffer for it. Doesn't look like there's any way to go down there. Oh, wait, there's one more down here, maybe. That might be a possibility. So yeah, my main complaint about the game is, uh, I guess, twofold. One is that um, it's uh, a little bit rote with respect to... Oh, let's go the other way. One is that it can be a little bit difficult to find the exit sometimes. The other one is that sometimes the structure of the game is a little bit obvious and takes some of the surprise away. Uh, because there is a, a tendency to basically walk out into an open field. And if you ever walk out into an open field, that essentially means that aliens are going to swarm you. So there's a lot of the surprise of the game kind of taken away as a result of that. I was just seeing if there's anything we can combine here. Uh, it doesn't look like there's a secret over there. There are sometimes like Zelda-style cracks in walls where you can throw a bomb. Uh, and then as a result, you can... Um, so this is a good example, actually. I walked outside and immediately was like, okay, I know there's going to be aliens here. Um, but yeah, it, it takes a little bit of the surprise away, which is kind of unfortunate. But yes, I, I'm also looking for secrets as well if I can find them. But I've only found two or three secrets again in my entire life playing Teleglitch. Ah, uh, this looks like the way to go down to the next floor, actually. So there might be something in here. So we can, you can see here we have a choice. Right, teleport to the plankton farm. Or left, teleport to a military biology sector. Let's just see if there's any items that I can take here. I might not be. Right is plankton farm, left is military. Uh, let's go left in this situation, and uh, that will give us uh, like an end of level stat screen. So that took us like 12 minutes, and again, the story continues to go onwards here. Uh, and accuracy was pretty good. Items combined four, kills 47 on mutants, all right. Let's uh, just hit um, C to continue for now. We could also save. Now it's worth noting that um, as much as I've said, you know, like it's, it's gonna be a long game for you, uh, if you're if you're gonna succeed, it's worth noting that it's kind of like Spelunky in the same sense that uh, ooh a revolver. It's worth noting that it's like Spelunky in the sense that uh, after you fulfill certain conditions, you don't have to start at level one every single time. You can start like once you beat level five or once you get to level five, uh, then you can um, start on level three from that point onwards. Not level five, level three. So. Um, the stronger you do, I guess, the, the further you can start towards the end. So there is kind of like a progress system there. Uh, we're still doing fine on health. We'll play until we die on this run. But I would like to point out that as much as I have occasional problems with Teleglitch... Oh, shit. Um, we might die here. As much as I have uh, occasional problems with Teleglitch, I still think this is a, va a vastly... I wouldn't necessarily say underrated game, because everybody who's played it loves it. Uh, but an underknown game, or a, a, a game that's not known nearly as much as it should be. I think this is the kind of game... Uh, that a lot of people would be really into if they knew it existed. Uh, we are down to four health. This might actually be our death here. I should probably try to eat some canned meat. Very quickly, eat some canned meat. Okay. Uh, and then get hit again. That hurts. Oh. And that is... He's doing ten damage. Like, one can of meat per hit. That is expensive. Hello? Sure, why not? This is not the best timing, I must admit. Please... Oh, my God. Survive. There we go. We have killed him. We are in a very bad state, though. Um, this is some kind of switch. So there is like a... I wouldn't necessarily say a puzzle system, but oh god, we've released the horde. There are some times when you have to um, hit some switches to progress. We are now down to four health. 
I will die in one more hit. Ah, there we go. So we've died, unfortunately. So you did not want to die, but you did. Next time, try to do what you want to do instead of something you don't want to do. So don't go to curse rooms, I think is what this is telling me. Let's just take a quick look at the interface here. Uh, once we actually get back, I'm not sure if we have to hit the space bar or something. There we go. So we can see our end of stats, or end of game stats. You know, those are our options. Continue, new game, info, exit. You can play this in full screen if you want. I understand the resolution might be all sorts of jacked up uh, because it is running in like 640 by 480 natively. I don't know how it looks when it's blown up, honestly, but, uh, you know, play it in a window like I play Isaac for the most part. The other thing I wanted to mention is that as things get uh, further and further along, I have heard secondhand, uh, but the game gets a little bit more nuanced and, you know, you'll encounter things like security patrols and, you know, cameras that if you walk by will trigger hordes to come after you. So things get vastly more difficult as time moves on. In any case, uh, this is Teleglitch Die More Edition, the kind of republishing of Teleglitch which is now going to be available. It's currently available for pre-order on Desura. The Steam store page isn't up yet, but when um, the Steam store page is up, I will uh, update the video description below to include a link to that. But as of right now, there is a link to the Desura pre-order page uh, for Teleglitch, Die More Edition. Highly recommend it if you didn't pick up the game uh, on its first pass. I don't know if this is worth picking up if you already own the game, uh, but I'm assuming that most of the people out here watching this don't own the game. So I would encourage you, you know, if you have the means and the interest uh, to check it out. I'm not sure if Desura also has a demo available, which allows you to play a level or two that might be uh, something that could help uh, define whether or not you should make a purchase here uh, as always keep an eye out for uh, teleglitch especially if you're the kind of person who's more interested in buying it in a steam sale later down the line highly recommended survival horror twin stick shooters with roguelike elements basically as always thanks for watching uh, again link to the desura page in the video description below and i will see you next time